Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, webinar on how to create a digital twin of your hardware equipment in Automation Studio. Uh, first of all, uh, the definition of a digital twin is actually a virtual representation that serves the real-time digital con counterpart of a physical object or process. So with Automation Studio, we have the possibilities of uh, inserting uh, pictures, uh, inserting a uh, definition, description uh, to actually complement our uh, schematics. Uh, we also have the capability of creating illustrated components which then can be used to reproduce uh, an hardware trainer that you may have in your class and so on. Okay, The purpose here this morning is to show you what you can do and what we can do to help you. Okay, uh, there is uh, the, the illustrated libraries that we are working on right now are actually very helpful to teach students the wiring skills of different technologies versus using the symbology, which helps for blueprint reading, obviously. Um, and our illustrated libraries are always improving, are always in development. So we really ask uh, our customers to actually give us feedback on component they would like to see in these illustrated libraries so they can then create the virtual uh, digital twins of their equipment. For example, uh, on this screen here, you see that we have like an airplane which has landing gears and then we see the gears going down as the hydraulic circuit move down. So the, here we have images beside the symbols and the images come from the trainer. So when the students transition from the theory to practice, he knows what to look for. Uh, in this case here we have real pneumatic, real looking pneumatic components. Here we have like a V of D trainer basically that just drives a motor with some buttons. So all these things can be done and we can do much more. I mean with the flexibility of Automation Studio uh, we can create, I mean if you have like a trainer in your classroom which you have a DC component that you can place and then connect we can definitely do the, the exact same thing in Automation Studio and even putting pictures of your equipment so the students actually take them, move them around and connect them. Uh, same thing as uh, for automotive, for example. People may have like, they want to have like a wiper that when they're going to connect it, they're going to see the wipers going back and forth and, and having the component that looks like the one in real life. So when the students connect to it, they feel like they're actually wiring up the component itself. Okay, so this is where uh, it's important today that you realize that we are always very open to receiving new requests from customers because we want these libraries to improve a lot. We've had people contacting us for domotic, you know, for in-house in uh, sensors and things like that. Well, we can create like a door sensor and then you click on the door, the door will open, will trigger the sensor and there's many things that we can do. Okay, so... My name is Christian Porto. I'll be presenting today what Automation Studio offers that is already made and also what we can design uh, to help increase our database of components which will then help you build digital twins of your equipment. We are uh, too many people today at the presentation. Therefore, we will not be able to take questions as we go during the presentation. But uh, there's a question interface in the GoToMeet webinar. You can write down your question uh, we'll try to answer them as we go. If not, at the end, we'll reserve time to actually answer any questions that were listed in that area. Or also, if you have questions, we can give you the mic then and we'll answer them uh, directly. Okay. The period at the end, the presentation should not last more than about 45 minutes. And then at the end, we'll be open for question and that period of time is open. Okay, so we'll be there as long as there's question because we want to make sure that you have all the answers that you're looking for. So thank you again for being here today and let's start the webinar on how to create digital twins uh, with Automation Studio. Thank you. Okay, so this is the version E7.1 of Automation Studio. Um, and like you know, we have libraries of components which we can drag and drop on our schematic to build a diagram very easily. And now that we're focusing today on digital twins, let me show you the basic 
a feature that we've we've had for quite some times before we move on to the more uh, advanced uh, new capabilities so for example uh, as you remember we can build schematic using the symbols like that without any problem and connect them and everything works well um, now you can also add pictures okay so as you remember with the definition is just the digital twin is basically creating a digital view of your real equipment so to help student transition from theory to practice you can insert picture beside the uh, components okay for example if you have a pump and you want to put a picture beside it this is how you can do it you just go here on picture in the home tab you have to make a small square somewhere and then it's going to ask you okay, where is the picture and I'm going to select my pump so you see the image is pretty big but all I can do is actually resize this component like that let's say this is the dimension that I want I can just place it beside my pump select both element right click on it then group and now this if I move it it becomes one component you see I just took the line too much so I can easily just ungroup take the line here delete this line select again and simply group again okay but now that you've done this you need to find a way to be um, so it's easy to share with your students so you need to actually create a custom library okay this we saw a couple in the uh, previous videos that we've done but just to show you quickly here let's create a, a new library so if I click on this icon here the software is going to ask me where to save it so I'm just going to save it here and name it let's say uh, Christian let's say Christian's library for example it could be your school name it could be your own name you decide okay so now I have Christian's library which is empty right now so I can create a category let's say I'll call it hydraulic and uh, then I can create a subcategory if I want you know this is you build it the way you want and all I can do is simply take this and just drag it in your library like this you see now it has a name called assembly you right click on it and you can rename it to uh, a pump or whatever name that you want okay and now I can just also click here to see the icon big and now the students takes it out and he's gonna have the image always beside the component so this is how it could be it could be helpful for students to actually have pictures okay uh, to give you an example I'm gonna open one of my library so let's just close this one and let's open another one here that I've done over time and here you see we have pictures and these are actual the exact same way we just did but I've put the pictures like that beside the component and if you do a schematic using these it's still gonna work because you have the component right beside it like that so you see if I go like this I just connect this ear and this ear if I launch simulation you see the system work because pictures are beside and even if you would have put the picture on top of the component you see here this is a sample like this let me just zoom all you see if I simulate I only see the pictures like that and I can still click on the component here to change their setting which will affect the simulation as well and basically here all I've done is let's say if I ungroup this component I take my pump like this and if I ungroup all I did basically is that I made sure that the picture was going to be hiding the component but I would still see the connection port like that so I can connect them in the circuit for example okay and once I did this I just select both I group them go into your library which I've done before and you can just drag it in here you see for example I had a customer who was teaching sprinkler system so basically what he did he took a sprinkler head like that and all he did is if I ungroup this behind this he used a throttle valve to simulate the same flow loss 
of this sprinkler head when it's open. So then the students can actually build a schematic. They can define to use water instead of oil in the system and specify all the length of each hose to actually be able to simulate a sprinkler system in Automation Studio. So there's a lot of different possibilities that you can do with these uh, virtual components. Also, in the, when you do create customized components and things like that, we can also create some animation. So you see here, for example, this is something that say that we've done for a braking system uh, on a train. Okay, so basically, if I just come here and I just take a lever to activate this, let me just take a push button three two like this. I'm going to push a pressure source here and an exhaust and just connect this like this. If I simulate, you see, this feels like it's controlling. Hold on. I, I have lines here because I just forgot to erase all that. Uh, sorry about that. You see here? So it makes it visual to see what, what's happening. Okay. And this is why we are... And this, I'm not going to say this enough, but we are always welcoming any comments, suggestions, or components that you want us to add in the software to make it so you can customize it uh, and we produce your own equipment. Okay? Uh, this, when we build things like that, after that we can make it available for other customers. So it's, it's really important to understand that we are looking forward every time to add these type of components, okay? So this is the, the way of the library being able to insert pictures. Um, to create the animation that we just did, let me just bring it back. The way it works basically is that if I ungroup this, this ear is actually doing an, an animation, okay? So we can do animations like that. This is gonna be a rotation. So we, we actually make a rotation of this part of the drawing according to the position of a cylinder. So when the cylinder extends and retract, it looks like it's moving this. It looks like it's attached to it, but it is not attached. It's just a reference. You see if I go like this, so it's the way we position it that makes it look like that. Okay? So doing basic animations like that would be something that we can definitely go online and train you how to make. Uh, to reproduce some scenarios, okay? Now that we've done that, let me just show you a circuit here that we could do that is more applicable to specific things, okay? Let's say, for example, aviation, okay? We have, like, a landing gear. You know, like the little animation that we just did? You can also have... You can insert pictures in the, in the software, like this and you see the wheels here on this drawing are actually going to be making a rotation with the position of these cylinders so if I start the simulation and I just go here wheel down these wheels are turning according to the position of the cylinders if I go back up so you see adding a bit of animation like that really helps to create digital twins of your equipment. I mean, I can make, a, I can take a view of a, a side of a plane and make the flaps moving according to different components. And then if I go here, emergency pump, I'm actually bringing those down with an emergency pump here. Okay, so this is what we can do for uh, creating um, illustrated views uh, of uh, systems that may be more applicable to your needs and for this you contact us we will do an online presentation to show you how to make these animations and then move from there and then if we if you if we feel that it is uh, more complex we can do it for you and then uh, then after that all we ask is that we can share that with other instructor as well okay now to go back with the pictures that we just saw, I'm going to show you a digital twin of a trainer. Okay, so let me just go here, digital twin. 
you'll see here this is actually one of our uh, distributor in France okay and he's building trainers like that okay on these trainers the students actually need to take from the store that is here components they have to assemble the sandwich components before they make a schematic and take readings on that okay so for example here what we have is that we have components that are already pre-made in sandwiches basically and you see those pictures are pictures of his own trainer so the same component that you find here he took pictures and he put them on the drawing so you can take the pictures from from the web from your own equipment like i had a customer and a heavy equipment mechanic he had like different machine like a backhoe or forklift and things like that so he had a library section for each of his machine so when you were using a pressure relief valve you could see that on the John Deere truck, the pressure relief looked at one way, and then on another truck, the pressure relief looked another another different uh, way. So it just helps students afterwards when they go on the equipment to realize quickly what they're looking for because they've seen the parts also in simulation before they move on to the equipment. Okay. So you see, if I simulate, it still works the way it should, and if I open the library. That was created for that you'll see what i mean you see here if i go symbol these are let me just lock the library push pin here these are actual elements from the library so if i move that a bit like this you see if i take a valve like this it's made all in a group then if i want to bring in let's say another component i can just go like this and you see they're, they're stackable another one like this so this is exactly what I can build on the trainer and all the part numbers reflect the exact same part number that he has on his trainer. And if I want, I have pictures here also of all the different components with the same part names. So maybe you want to put them right away beside the component like we did before, or you want to create a section with the part numbers and then also another section with the symbols if you want. Okay. So this is a type of an application which uses more the pictures that we can add beside the component like that. Okay. Now, uh, let me show you another sample of a uh, digital twin of a system that we've used at a trade show. So it's called Air Telescoping Arm. So it's from the same company that I just showed you. They had a trade show in France and they had a machine which students can manipulate to actually feel the power of hydraulic and it was quite simple just had to take a, a tray like that put it here and then lift this so it goes back so what we've done is that we've created a, a ver an illustrated view of the machine like this so in the trade show we had the real machine and on the screen we had this system with joystick so now you see I'm moving uh, the joystick by moving this this little arrow here but I can use real game joystick also so you could actually move this like that and then when you position correctly you can take the component like this you can move it in the basket at the end if I drop it here like this and then if I lift this it just goes back and then I could just do it again. So this is a digital twin of the real equipment controlled with this hydraulic circuit here. Okay, so keep in mind that we can do uh, this kind of layout. We also have virtual systems. Virtual systems, as you know, it's systems that we build that are pre-animated on which you can just uh, control the system itself. So let me show you a sample that we've done for a customer. If you've participated to the last week's webinar on how to insert faults and how to create a multi-technology project, you've seen this sample, but you see, he has something in his class, which is this, a roll-up door like that, and the circuit. So, but he only has one unit like this. So putting students on it, it's kind of not always obvious because he has 20 kids in his class. So. We've created this so you can actually have students work on this 
And once it works here, they can go on the equipment to do the manipulation of the equipment. You see here, if I push, the door goes up. If I push down, door goes down. If I trigger the sensor here, oh, it's going to go back up automatically. And it won't go down anymore until I remove. And then it's going to go down. So here we have a different system where we have a little virtual animation of his equipment. And we've also created the schematic which control this and on which we've put faults also. So students, when they trigger a fault, they have to measure it with the voltmeter, amp meter, and things like that here to actually try to figure out what the issue is. So here, just to go quickly, because we've talked about that already in a previous webinar, we have like a, uh, the here, the connection on the port 10 of the contactor is loose. Uh, we have created one that the motor is jamming. Another one that a push button will not make the contact when you push on it. A couple things like that. Okay, so this is something that we can do also with the virtual system. If I open now another system, this is something that we had. When we go to trade shows, we had like a little suitcase with some lights and switches and things like that just to make to show um, people how we can uh, communicate with it, with equipment uh, using the uh, PLC through OPC. This is our next uh, video in uh, next week. But you see here, this is what we have, what we brought to shows. You see we have buttons here with fans, some lights and valve. So we've reproduced a virtual version of this. Okay. So now what I can do is when I start the simulation, if I push the button here, you see the circuit is moving according to what my system here. If, if I wanted to, I could have basically just put also the connectors right below each light and I would have to wire up this element directly on, on the virtual trainer. It's up to you to decide. Okay. To, I'll show you one more thing in electricity. Uh, we've done a basic library okay, uh, for automotive. Let me just start a new project with electricity. It's, it's very rudimentary. It's very basic. But we can. it's to show you that we can do so many things here. If I open the library, let's say automotive, you see something simple. Let's say I take a battery like this. Then I can take a relay. In the car industry, this type of relay is something that is it's it's very well used. Okay, that's why when we do demonstration to automotive, they they see our relay contacts. They say, you know what, it's good. But in cars, we always have those relays that it's it's they just want to know how to connect to it. You know, they don't need to know the inside of it. And so here, if I just put a couple of lights like this. And then I can just wire this up. And you see, I found online a picture like that of a schematic, which basically reproduces what we want to do here. Okay? So you see my lights. I have to ground it. So I can just take two grounds like this. Okay? On my relay here, the pin 85 is grounded also. So I can just go here. Pin 85 is grounded. Then I'm going to bring my positive here to a push button because I want to be able to trigger in and out. You see my push button is not done illustrated. Okay, I just I just did that very quickly. But we could have definitely create a push button that looks more like a real life push button. Okay. And then this will actually go to my pin 86. I just following what's here. And then the plus is going to go to my pin 30. So I'm just going to come and get it from here. And this, my output of my contact, is going to go trigger my lights. Like this. And again, I just need to put a ground on the battery. So if I simulate, I push here, and then you see my lights just open. So you see, it's, it's, this is something very simple for us to generate, okay? and put in the library like that. So that 
I mean, it's imp it, we we want feedback from our customers to add more components like that and make these libraries available for everyone with as many components as possible to have students practice their wiring skills also with Automation Studio, okay? Many of you have been using the software for a long time with symbols. Uh, it helps blueprint reading. You do you do your schematic with standardized components. But again, because of the COVID situation, a lot of instructors find themselves of not having access to their trainer or sometimes just not having enough trainers for all the students. So having libraries like that really helps. You know, for example, I can make like a, an image of a wiper that when you connect to it, the wipers start going back and forth. Like, so it's just more visual for them. And it's fun for them to see that they actually connect something and then it works and then it's visual, not just schematic, but actually visually like that. Okay. So this is what we can do for uh, electricity for cars. For example, we can build a library with so many components, but we just need your feedback to do that. Okay. Um, now also, so we've seen the I.O. We've seen, what we've done is you can also do, a lot of you have trainers. You've purchased trainers from all kinds of suppliers, manufacturers. And with Automation Studio, with our illustrated library, nothing stops you from creating something like this. So I have right now a real looking trainer, like I would purchase from a supplier on which I have components I can't move my components away. I can I cannot move them, but I can actually wire to it and make a circuit. So now if I simulate, if I push a button here, oh, you see my valve gets triggered, but I need to open the air to my system. And if I push, you see my cylinder extend. And you see I can do the little animation like that so they see what's going on. It helps them realize and here, same thing on the relay, on the button, I have normally closed and normally open contacts. So with this, you can create, replicate what you have with the illustrated view. And again, we will eventually also create trainers like that, a bunch of trainers in Automation Studio, and we'll supply them to our customers so they can actually use it uh, and just have the students do the wiring uh, part of it, okay? So the illustrated, the illustrated library that we have really helps to be able to create virtual trainers of your equipment, okay? Uh, another one that uh, we've received from a customer, it was uh, more using a VFD, okay? So let me open this here, uh, this one. So he sent me a picture of his trainer. He says, Chris, what can we do with this? So uh, it turned out that we had the variable frequency drive that he was using. You see here, this is the trainer. Okay, so just a couple buttons, toggle switch, you know, things like, and a motor with some torques on it. So I've just reproduced uh, this trainer like that. I, ch I changed it a bit, okay, because I mean, I could have went and used uh, the toggle switch too if I go HMI here. And I go uh, controls, switch. You see, I can take select to switch like that. So I could have used different components, but I just use this one. And you can just run the simulation. And if you wired it up correctly, if I go here forward, you see it spins now. And I have different combination here to actually change my speed because of preset values in my VFD. But again, when you give that to the students, I mean, all the wires are not there. So they actually have to wire up the circuit, okay? So they need to go, okay, I need to go to, to the pin R5 from here and, go and move on and just do the connections and they can test as they do it. And you see, for example, if I open a library, now we have here, for example, it's the uh, electrical component here. Uh, for example, if I want to add some things, I can just go panel that I meant. I can take a DIN rail here, for example. And then I'm going to go into sensor timer. I can use like a Siemens timer. I'm going to put here. 
oh I need to move it down a bit so no problem I can just move it down here and then I can just connect this to my components also so you see so we try to this was asked by a, a teacher same thing as a, as a, we have another timer which is an unrun timer so when you simulate for example you can set the time and then when you energize the real the, the right ports on the timer it's going to start counting and then we'll flip contact and CNO uh, the way it should so like again I said we can help we can build these components like that and we're looking forward to building more and more you see a relay like that okay because we want people to actually use these illustrated components to help students better understand the wiring of components versus symbols okay for example let me open something very simple which is a relay everybody needs to teach students a relay how it works you energize the coil contacts switch from normally closed normally open and things like that when you use only the symbols like that it seems pretty simple I just energize it it closed and the turn and it turns on the light but when you do it using wiring of components like that you see I push a button it does the same job but you need to actually know to energize the coir pin 2 and 7 and you need to go get let's say a normally open contact which would be let's say between 1 and 3 so when you energize it it's going to close so these things are very easy now to demonstrate in the software because of the illustrated components that we're developing okay so this is how you can create uh, digital twins of your equipment uh, we are open to create different systems like that we always want to improve you know if you go into the software here and you click on the first book here you have custom libraries we have some DC electrical components for breadboard that you can use in automation studio we have also the renewable energy solar panels wind turbine residential electricity same thing that was initiated by a customer sending us a request you know let, let me just do something here for example okay let's say if I erase all that let me open my residential electricity okay I mean when I was at school it happens I mean our first electrical courses basically we had like light bulbs like let's say we had like uh, three light, light bulbs like that okay then uh, we had some uh, switches let's say two-way switches here another two-way switch uh, three-way switch okay I just can just remove the my, my question marks like this okay this is just inf uh, I internal IDs that I can remove I can put like a four-way switch and then the students just wire up the circuit that you want lights in serial lights in parallel uh, three-way switches upstairs downstairs so they can open a file that has these components on it and all they can do is actually wire up the different schematic by just taking wires from the components here okay let's go here and then I need the power source okay I can just bring my 120 volt here let's say and then I connect my 120 volt and let's see if I bring this here what's gonna happen if I go on flip the switch okay the light open and so on okay so that's when we say we can help building virtual digital twin is that also the trainers that you have in class I mean when I go on websites sometime of schools I see so often pictures in the background of the school trainers and for even for cars I mean I can have like a, a, a back of a car here with all the lights the flashers the braking lights the and then the, the schematic of the components below it so when the students connect it correctly he sees the light opening on the back of the car so and again we really want to create those for you and help them help you because we want to uh, uh, generate more and more for our customers as well okay so this is something that we really want to help you with so if I go back to this library we have also a residential electricity I just showed you 
we have ba baseboard so you want to show the watts how many watts will take and then if you go over 20 amps then your breaker is going to trip you know you can show that also with this we used uh, we use sometimes in hydraulic for example we can put loads on cylinders okay but we've had customers saying okay i can apply a load but my students don't really see the load so for them it's kind of like they don't really understand what you mean there's a load okay it's like so we've created this library let me just open it here cylinder with loads and you see you when you drag it out like that you can see the load on the cylinder and on and what's the beauty of this also is that in simulation you can also adjust the weight so you see for example let's just do something very quickly here let's just put a tank here and a tank there and a throttle valve like this i'm going to simulate so you see now it's very it's very slightly open it goes out very very slow but what if i increase the weight to 2000 kilogram look how fast it goes even more weight you see now it's it's going more much, much faster now and if i put a pressure gauge here i'll see that this actually generates a lot of pressure let's do that let's just go here hydraulic let's take a pressure gauge and connect my pressure gauge over here you see 5000 psi if i put it back to 500 oh only 120 psi it's oscillating like that because it's pushing against the it's compressing a bit the oil and as i go up the pressure will also increase let's say if i put 1500 you see now 360 psi the weight creates there so this enables you to make it more visual for students seeing what's going on like that instead of just putting opening the cylinder twice and just putting a weight okay um, something important also uh, that i forgot to mention uh, let me just open again a uh, electrical acdc uh, template is with version 7.1 something important is that when we have now let's say if i open here a uh, mortar okay if i have a mortar that is using uh, custom components to it okay well now with uh, let me open yeah okay motor let's just put the motor like that you see if i click twice on the motor i have all access to all the very the, the properties of the motor okay but sometimes we've created a component that is using a different approach okay it's like we call them custom components and in this case if i click twice there was no way of modifying it you may have experienced that if you work with the illustrated libraries and we couldn't modify the properties of the mortar because it's just like a, a combination of a bunch of things that makes it but now with version 7.1 if you go custom component you can actually open the behavior and then you can click on the mortar here to change its properties okay and then you just close it again and it will be applied to the image you see if i close it here and it's going to be applied to it so this is something new with version 7 okay something if i open for example the pneumatic uh, illustrated component i just need a pneumatic uh, sheet and i take let's say a cylinder let's say if i go actuators a double acting cylinder i drag it on my schematic like this if i click twice i can't change the length of it the dimensions and nothing because it's it's a bunch of drawing that moves but now with version 7.1 i click on open behavior you see here's my cylinder i can click on it and i can change now all the properties that i would piston diameter rod diameter stroke length and when i close it it's going to keep these settings so then you can put it back in your library with these settings so when the student takes it out he's going to have the way that you want them to see it and again you see if you go to your library that you've created you can just drag and drop into the library also okay so this is pretty much what i wanted to show you for how to create digital twins of your equipment you can definitely use our illustrated libraries that we have 
if you use the illustrated libraries and you feel like components are missing, you know, if you go flow valve and you say, okay, Chris, I would be missing a throttle valve with something special or whatever, you let us know, okay? It's important because we do want to add as many components as needed for customers to be able to build their uh, own system, okay? So um, keep this in mind. And we look forward also to hearing from you. Uh, I'm gonna. There's a little uh, qu couple questions that comes after the webinar today. Um, just asking you if you have any comments or suggestions. Please let us know. Uh, we would like to create custom libraries like that, illustrated libraries for HVAC, maybe you know elements. Uh, there's there's so many things that we can do. Like I said, you know the limit is we have. The, the capability in the software of building very complex simulation models like the VFD that we've done and we then we can then put an image on top of it and just generate a component from there so students don't see the background they just connect to it and then they can make a complete circuit in simulation and by doing that I'm sure that all of you participated to the the webinars we did this week but uh, this is actually a multi-technology environment in which we've used some illustrated libraries where we have a motor control, we have a compact logic PLC, and we also have illustrated pneumatic. Okay, so when I simulate here, everything works together. If I just push start, I energize my circuit here, and there you go. So your system is completely working together with some, you see the inputs and outputs on the PLC. So a lot of time, you know, when you have your PLC trainers, the students only build the logic in the PLC all the time. But now with our illustrated PLC library, we have a bunch of them. You know, if you open this one here, illustrated PLCs. Okay, I should have closed some, okay, because there's a lot open. I can just click on this book here to actually close them. So let's close this. A residential, we don't need it. Hydraulic, neither. Okay, now let's go PLC. You see we have Alan Bradley, Eaton, Koyo, The Click, Mitsubishi, Omron. So students, you can have it on the trainer like that. And the students have to actually have to learn how to wire up the PLC. And then again, you can create a virtual trainer in which you have a PLC with some lights and switches or controlling something else that the students just do the wiring to it and test and then simulate. Okay, so... That's what I wanted to show you today. So thank you very much for participating to this webinar. If you have any question, now it's the time. Uh, I will uh, just raise your hand on the, the little application of GoToWebinar and I'll be able to give you the mic so we can discuss it and uh, I'm going to try to answer any questions that you may have. So thanks again everyone and uh, I will be sending a link to the webinar we just did today to all the participant and thank you again and let's go for your question now thank you